Hello everyone, back in the shop today, still making things happen. Uh, today we've got to paint some early Harley Davidson motorcycle gas tanks. Uh, these came in to me sandblasted and they're dented, dinged up. They need a lot of body work. I don't know what happened to that one. Looks like it got ground or dragged on the pavement or something. It's got a lot of deep lines in it. But um, these need a lot of body work and they're already coated inside with a gas tank sealer. They're very rough right here too. Uh, so that prevents us from welding studs on there and picking out dents like this. We can't use a shrinking disc on it because we don't want to disturb what's inside there. Um, so uh, the only thing we can do is uh, is lay some filler on there. Um, but before we do, uh, you know, we like to put the epoxy primer on there first. That's the proper way to do filler work. Um, a lot of guys argue with me on that, and they like to put it on the bare metal. Um, that just causes rust, and the patch will pop eventually. So, first thing we're going to do is lay down some epoxy primer. And there's a lot of guys out there I know that are painting. I get a lot of emails from guys painting, and they say the epoxy's not sticking, or it's not laying down right, or they got fish eyes, or they got problems. Um... You know, there's no need for that. So, we're going to go over this step by step. The first thing that I like to have you not do um, is clean this stuff with lacquer thinner or, or anything like that. Um, <coughs> I use this 901 pre paint cleaner made by RM uh, for all my cleaning on bare metal. Uh, there's other good solvents out there. Don't just fill your gun with lacquer thinner, spray these down, and quick come back with some epoxy. Uh, it's just going to lead to problems. So, I gave these a rough cleaning right here on the bench inside uh, with the pre-paint cleaner. Once I get them outside on the stand, we'll clean them again with the same material. Um, <clears throat> and another thing, when you're working with epoxy, uh, your part needs to be 65 degrees minimum. Your um, booth or paint area needs to be 65 degrees. And uh, temperature is kind of critical. Let's run over here. Uh, I've got a mix set up. There's the wood stove. I've got some black mixed up here. It's sitting by the stove. It's nice and warm. Uh, your paint needs to be warm. Your parts, your boot, like I say, your boot, everything needs to be warm. I've got the booth heating up right now, and I've got a propane heater in there. Uh, do not use uh, diesel or kerosene fired heaters in your work area, um, such as something like that guy. Don't put that in your painting area, you'll get little oil droplets out of that. So, <clears throat> we've got that heating up. Propane is nice and clean. The only thing it'll do is maybe put some moisture in the air. Um, it's winter time right now. That adds another dimension to painting. Um, you guys down south and out west uh, don't have to fight with that. But um, 19 degrees this morning. Snowing again. Uh, but we'll get the booth up to 70 degrees. We'll move everything out there. And uh, I will meet you out there in just a bit. Okay guys, we're in the booth. We got our little heater going, hooked up to our propane tank. Uh, it's about 72 degrees in here. Here's the tanks. And you can see I built this little stand for them. Uh, if you're trying to paint something and you want to do a nice job, you got to have a way to hold and handle all your tanks and stuff. So. Just out of some electrical conduit and a few pieces of scrap metal, uh, I threw this stand together. And it's still pretty cold out. It's actually gone down to 18 degrees out there, so I'm not going to turn the fans on the whole time. We're going to spray these. We'll probably put two or three coats on here. We're going to spray the first coat, uh, evacuate the fumes, and turn the fan on just to 
there's little amount of time to keep the, uh, the cold air out. Uh, then we'll let it warm up again, wait a half hour between coats, and uh, we'll get two, three good coats on there, let it dry overnight. Um, I always like to let it dry overnight before we start doing the body work and the, you know, the filler work. So uh, once they dry in here, we'll leave the heater on, then we'll move them back into the main shop and let them sit overnight stay very warm in there overnight so um, that's the plan so uh, these are cleaned again with the pre-paint cleaner we blew them off uh, we'll blow them off one more time and then we'll start shooting the epoxy primer I'm using SPI black it's been activated and sitting for 45 minutes and I gave it a shot of reducer that's going to help it dry a little bit faster and that's that's what we want today it's like I say it's chilly out and we've got all our other uh, snowblower parts there um, that Jeep and fenders and hood and stuff uh, undercover and we'll get to squirting these guys next Okay guys, just had to evacuate some fumes here. We're trying to keep it warm, but keep it clear. So, we we'll just keep going on. Okay guys, the heat's back on. We lost a few degrees. Uh, these guys are sitting here drying right now. We're gonna go a half hour between coats. Should get back up to about 75 in here in a half an hour. Uh, we'll 
put another coat on and we'll just keep doing that. Um, put a coat, let it set up, put another coat, let it set up until we get three coats on there. Then we'll let them dry uh, and like I say, this evening we'll bring them in the main shop. So we'll just keep at it. I'm not going to bring you all the steps there, but uh, same thing as we just did the first time. and. Uh, that's how we're gonna go about this. Like I say, it's cold, it's snowy, it's kind of uh, windy out there, so um, we just gotta keep the heat on here and make sure this doesn't get below 65. Hey everybody, we're back on these early Harley tanks. And when we left off last time, we had our epoxy primer on there, and then we did our filler work. And what you're looking at right now, super smooth. Let me try and get you focused in there. Super smooth and ready to accept our top coat. This is four coats of uh, <coughs> uh, SPI. <coughs> turbo primer and it builds very fast if you mix it four to one and uh, we've got all the all the scratches dents dings boogers everything out of these things now and um, everything is looking super smooth and, and just the way I want it and after the four coats there's my water bucket there's my 400 grit paper uh, I always use Klingspore paper. I've been using that for years. Not associated with them in any way or anything. I just, it's, it's the best paper out there. Uh, I have this from 80 grit all the way up to 2000 grit. <coughs> um, 400 wet on the turbo primer is, is perfect. And after that, you know, we like to use the pre paint cleaner. Like I say, don't use lacquer thinner or acetone or anything like that. Uh, I have the tanks right now in the shop. Uh, it's, it's warm in here. It's about 70 degrees in here. Uh, the paint booth is heating up now as we speak. Uh, we're going to mix some single stage urethane black and we're going to go after these uh, with the finished color today. So uh, I'm going to let the booth heat up maybe for half hour, 45 minutes and I'll meet you back out there uh, with the tanks on the stand and we'll start laying some color down. Okay guys, here's our black single stage urethane uh, again from Southern Polyurethanes. It's a very nice black, uh, super glossy and the nice thing about it is when you paint a gas tank or something this is super resistant to chemicals, so you won't get you know any streaks or anything. Uh, if you just go to and get enamel paint or go to Tractor Supply and get some implement paint or something, I see a lot of guys do that. Their tanks look like hell after that, after they get a little gas on them. This is super resistant to gasoline. You can clear this if you want to the next day uh, with the SPI clear. Um, once you see the gloss after you shoot it, I don't think you're going to want to clear it, but you can clear it. Uh, this is just a straight 4 to 1 mix. 4 parts paint, 1 part of the activator. I don't know if you can see on that, that's slow. Even in the cold weather, I like to use a slow uh, activator. It just lets everything uh, flow out real nice. and. Uh, I use slow or very slow for just about everything, no matter what time of year it is. And uh, once you get used to this stuff, you'll see what I mean. But uh, it really lays out real, real smooth. Uh, that fast or extra fast or something like that, that's just not where I want to be. So, four parts paint. And we'll just tickle in one part of the activator. Right there. We'll mix that up and it's ready to shoot. No induction time, nothing like that. So this is ready to go. The booth is warm. 
the tanks are on a stand and I'm using which I do all my finished painting with is a Iwata gun uh, 1.4 nozzle on that guy and it's just uh, the Iwatas seem to lay the paint down the best for me there's a million guns out there you can pick whatever you like I shoot my single stage urethane with this gun I have a dedicated Iwata clear gun and that's what I shoot all my finished stuff with um, once you get one you'll be real happy with it they are fairly expensive uh, I buy mine directly uh, from Japan and uh, the cost is much cheaper even with the shipping is still much much cheaper than, than some of these crazy uh, uh, paint supply houses or anything so if you're in the in the market for an Iwata uh, just shop it around because the prices are everywhere on those things they are expensive but they are worth it if you're doing any kind of quality painting okay I'm gonna filter this through put it in the gun and uh, head out to the booth alright it is super warm in here right now with the heat on we're gonna lose a lot of that once we clear the fumes out with the uh, fans but the tanks are on the stand I think you can see that and that's one of the best tips I can give you as far as painting something make sure you can hold it and you don't have a mess when you try and flip it a lot of guys might try and put these on a bench or something and paint them and then flip it and you'll get you know glossy spots and dry spots uh, you would be chasing it around uh, you might try and hold it from a string or a chain or something and then as you're painting it it's swaying and it's moving back and forth and you're not getting even atomization on the surface so like I say it only took about an hour to make that quick stand well worth it we could paint every area on there not have any trouble um, patience goes a long way when you're trying to paint something and do a nice job and we want these tanks to look nice on the bike so we're giving it our all all right I'm gonna try and get you some shots of the black going down uh, we'll see how that works out and I'll try and get some shots without messing the camera up Okay guys, we've got two coats on. Try and bring you in there. I think you can see my reflection in the camera here. Nice and glossy. Uh, you can get by with two coats without any trouble. I think I'm going to lay down a third coat uh, just in case I want to cut and buff these. Uh, you know, just the outside, not the, not the inside or anything. Um, The depth of gloss is real nice, but just in case we want to take a cut on these with some 2000 grit, uh, I'm going to lay down one final wet coat and we'll still have plenty of paint on there after we cut and buff it. So I think you can see the nice reflection in there, it's very, very deep, very glossy and third coat will come out the same way. 
Okay guys, it's been about a half an hour after the third coat. It's looking real good. You can see the reflection in the ceiling there, I think, all the filters. Uh, super high gloss. They're all looking good. I've got a tiny bit of junk. I don't know if it came off of me or came off the out of the booth or something, but I got a little bit of junk in this one. So this guy here, it's hard to see in the camera, but I got a little bit of dusty junk in the front of it. We'll just sand that out with some 1500 to 2000 grit. Uh, walk the wheel over it, buff that one out. Uh, the other three, I think they're looking absolutely perfect. Very happy with them, very happy with the gloss. So, I think we'll leave these three as is. So I've got the heater on low, uh, it's about 28 degrees outside, we're going to keep this on for, uh, I don't know, an hour or two, let this stuff set up pretty nice, uh, and then we'll just uh, turn the heater off and, and let it be. But, uh, it's always tricky painting in the winter, um, everything's going against you, but if you take your time and you're patient, uh, you can get very good results. So we'll just leave that guy just idling along there for a little bit should have enough propane left I think to get that paint set up real nice and uh, I'll be back with you oh let's see probably tomorrow and I will show you uh, getting those bits of dust out and buffing that one tank and uh, you can see what that's like and we can compare the difference between a buff tank and a just straight out of the gun tank and uh, I'll show you guys the results of that probably tomorrow or at the latest the next day. Okay guys, another chilly morning here. Uh, the paint is well cured on these tanks. And remember we were going to do some cutting and buffing on this one. I think you can see the shine on that very little difference between the one we cut and buffed and one we didn't so I gave these guys about six maybe seven hours of heat to get the paint dry when I painted them and then um, it's been cool the past couple days the paint is cured, it's super hard, very glossy, and uh, I think it's going to hold up real well. Here's the final one. You can see, you can see the depth of the gloss in there. Um, so these are ready to go onto uh, the motorcycle and get the project finished up. So. Every surface is painted, well protected, and if you take your time, you jig up a way to hold your tanks or any part, a fender, uh, a chassis, anything. If you set up for it real good, uh, like this here, these don't move when I'm spraying and they don't sway back and forth. That's what you need if you want to get a, a nice paint job, free of orange peel. Uh, a clean area if you have it. Like I say, we've got the intake air coming in, exhaust going out, uh, super clean area so we don't get any um, <clears throat> uh, junk in there. But uh, if you get your gun pressure set right and you take your time, you can see there is zero orange peel in there, super glossy. You could practically shave in there if you needed to. Uh, that's what you want to get when you're spraying black. And I think we'll end this one here. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing the process of painting the tanks. And if there's anything else you'd like to see, just let me know. 
And if you like the video, hit the like button and uh, subscribe. Spread the word, tell a friend, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Everybody stay safe and stay warm if you're here in the Northeast or down in Texas. Okay, we'll see you.